Hello back everybody for part two of our interview with Rudy Ajo. Rudy, when you were young watching the races up in the grandstands, I understand you witnessed the 44 car pile up in 1953. Yeah, yes I did. I was at the races with my dad. I don't really remember a lot about it except being pretty excited. My eyes were ready to pop out of my head. We were even sitting in the north end of the grandstands in turn four when it all happened. And, you know, I, mean, I was pretty stunned at the time. And I remember just a little bit about it because now I even remember some of the drivers like Steve Burria and, and, and guys like that that were in there. So you had a front, front row seat for that? Yeah, we had a good front row seat. And I guess that's the way I learned a little bit about racing. Was the, <laughs> was the track dusty? Is that what, how did? If I can remember the half mile any time we went there, we didn't go very often because it wasn't there very much. And then it was dusty, and then I even raced there one time in my career, and it was very dusty. On and the half mile? Yeah, it was hard to keep in water, and it was basically flat. You had to go drive by the old horse barns and turn mm -hmm. three and four. So as these cars were piling up, it was dusty more than likely, and everybody else just kept piling into the pile? Yeah, and everybody just come flying in. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I just, I'm infatuated with that. I think it's just such a neat story. Uh, what was your most memorable moment at Hibbing Raceway? Well, I think the most memorable was back in, uh, I can't remember what years, when my good friend Danny Claus would pass away at the racetrack, and uh, Ryan was in the same class he was, and Ryan didn't even want to race. He's pretty shook up. And, uh, and then that... Uh, that weekend, Ryan won both Labor Day shootouts. So that was kind of a bittersweet moment then yeah. for you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. I remember Danny very well. He was a great guy. I remember the day that he passed away at the track. I think that might have been 1998. Somewhere, Somewhere else. Around, yeah. uh, throughout your racing career, uh, who were some of the people who helped you on your car, like Pittman? Boy, I know I'm going to miss a lot of them, but I mean, Jack Hanneman, he's passed away, Mel Manhalter, uh, my son, uh, John Erickson, uh, Ron Masinski, everybody knows Ronnie from around the racetrack. And yep. I even named him one year as my crew chief. Uh, uh, man, I just got so many, I just can't think of it. They just, they, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be racing. I, mean, about, I had so many people at the... How about the notorious Jim Bullis? Was he a pitman? Yeah, Jim Bullis was, you know, he was... Yeah, but in the middle years there, he was my pitman. And, Jim is Jim, but Jim was very helpful. He was probably talented about anything. He could do anything. He could weld, he could solder, he could build roll cages, and he's a mechanic. He could do everything. He was, Jim, was, Jim was quite a character. Yeah, he was a character. I certainly Just like I said, Jim was Jim. Yeah, I, cer <laughs> I, I certainly miss seeing him around. Uh, and you, your wife has also been involved in racing too, right? Didn't she serve as... Yeah, uh, my wife has uh, always been involved, and I guess I would have to take some time to thank her for even putting up with me that many years. She served my like as vice... And she was in the ladies' auxiliary, yep, and, yep. and she also worked at the racetrack uh, when I was uh, president of the association. So. So, so you had a supportive family too, which helps tremendously. Yes, the whole family is supported, and even my son-in-law raced, and... I mean, everybody we know in our family has probably been involved in racing one time or the other. Yep. So you're a classic example of the racing family. Yep, and that's what it takes to keep things going. Okay. Other than actually driving, uh, you've been involved in racing off the track, too. You were president of the Iron Range Racing Association. Yeah, I was president for five years, and uh, I mean, it was quite an experience. That wasn't too long ago. That was like the late 2000s, wasn't it? Yeah, that, three years ago, I believe. Oh, okay. Before, but time goes fast. Okay. Uh, when you served as a president of the racetrack, did did anything come as a surprise? Did it end up being quite a different experience than you had ever thought it might be? Yes, it is. I mean, it, it was quite an honor to even be elected to get in there. But I mean, I, I think you know, you always, myself included, everybody else has always cut somebody else down by running the racetrack. They didn't do that, right? They didn't, but there is so much more to be involved in running a racetrack than what everybody would think. The, the commitment you got to make away from your family, the commitment you got to have to that racetrack, I, I think it was just a great learning experience. And I learned a lot myself about how a racetrack should be running. And none of us always do it right. And I guess when you do do it, you aren't going to make everybody happy. I mean, I mean, 
I mean, some people like to track dry, some like it wet, some like it this, some... So I mean, it, it, it's a very it, thankless it, it's job. It's a thankless job because everybody can't be happy. And then yeah. the, usually the guy at the end of the day that's happy, the guy that wins. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always one happy guy. Yeah, that's usually it's top of, always, always been. Okay. Are you currently involved in racing at all? Or do you just, do you watch or? I, I, I'm currently involved by going to the races. I mean, whenever I'm in town, you know, I do go do a little fishing out of town, but I went in town, I go to the races. I, I, I enjoy still going there and, I go to Grand Rapids when I get a chance, and when I travel, the, this winter I didn't, but usually I go down to Florida and I enjoy going to different tracks. And even on the way through the country, I'm always looking online, where's the racetrack? And so, I like so, to see how different racetracks are run, and I think that's good for everybody to learn that. So racing is still in your blood, you love to watch oh, it. I just love racing, I watch racing on TV, and when you watch these guys race down in Kansas and all that, you always try to pick it up and see mm -hmm. what the guys are doing. And, Okay, it's it's definitely entertaining. Yep. Once you're bit by the racing bug, it's tough tough yeah. to get rid of it. Well, once you once you got pulled into that, you're you're in it. Okay, all right. Well, this concludes part two. Please stay tuned for part three of our interview with Rudy Aho.